And welcome back to more Super Smash Bros. So last time, we cleared the one-player game mode and defeated Master Hand as Pikachu. So this time, we're going to look at some of the other single-player content, starting with bonus one. First of all, I wanted to go over how to unlock the four hidden characters. So, Luigi is unlocked by completing the Break the Target stages for the initial eight characters. Ness is unlocked by completing the one-player game mode with a maximum of three stocks, without using a continue, and on normal difficulty. Captain Falcon is unlocked by completing the one-player game mode in under 20 minutes, and without using a continue, and Jigglypuff is unlocked by simply completing the one-player game mode. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started with Break the Targets, and we will be playing first as Mario. So, uh, these are really good showcases for everyone's moves. Uh, a lot of them don't require every move, but a good chunk of them are, are necessary, such as Mario's Fireball. Here, the Mario Tornado isn't necessary uh, because it's mostly just designed to do damage, uh, but you can get some extra height off of it, which is nice. So instead of using the Uppy, we can actually kind of air stall a little bit. Um, you can also combine both, so you can actually Mario Tornado and then use an Uppy uh, for even more distance. But other than that, Mario is a pretty standard character, not anything too special with his moveset. Um, so that's that. All right, next is DK. DK is a very strong character. Um, he has a lot of range with his attacks, which will come in handy in a moment, because uh, he can actually hit that through the wall. Um, other than that, he's not great at recovering. His up B isn't stellar, uh, but it gets the job done in most circumstances. And uh, he has some really good attacking moves, like this charge up punch. Um, you can actually uh, store a charge by rolling. Um, as long as you don't get hit during the animation, you can continually charge it up like this, and then release it whenever you want, which is kind of cool. And he also has this like ground pound move, which doesn't help for breaking targets, but is good in battle. So uh, next is Link. Link has a sword, so he has a little bit more range. Uh, one cool thing is he actually has like a flurry rush attack if you mash A fast enough. Uh, he has a long reach uh, grab because he has a hook shot, um, and he has a bunch of different tools from the series like bombs, he has a spin attack, and he has the uh, boomerang. No bow and arrow until melee sadly, uh, but luckily it's not really necessary here. Um, this target up here, I feel like you're supposed to use the boomerang on. I find it very difficult to use the boomerang on it, so I just use spin, spin attack and make sure to land properly. Um, but this is really cool up here. So to get this target um, where the arrow is pointing upwards, what we have to do is actually use a bomb and toss it upwards. Um, and now we can just use the down air or just miss that one, that works too. Alright, so um, Samus. Like Link, Samus has a long-range grab because she has the grapple beam. Other than that, her moveset is kind of long-range in nature. Um, she has a screw attack uh, as her up B. It's not a great recovery, I find. She also has bombs, um, so we can hit that target from a distance like so. Um, why is this target being so finicky? <laughs> Normally I don't, don't have trouble with that one. And she has a charge beam that actually works like DK's punch, where you can kind of charge it up gradually by rolling. Uh, and then if it's charged up all the way, you can release it whenever you want. Um, other than that, there's not too much about Samus' movement that's worth going over. Um, you know, she's got good range, she is one of the taller characters, so I feel like that works in her favor, but she's also kind of slow if I recall correctly. Alright, so on to the second row of the originals, we have Yoshi! 
Yoshi is interesting. So he can actually uh, eat a character and lay an egg, which is really good against Metal Mario because then he'll just plummet off the stage if you position everything correctly. Um, but one of his most unique attributes is his up B. So unlike um, most characters' up Bs, um, Yoshi doesn't get any extra height off of this. Meaning, uh, if you actually need to recover, all you have is your double jump. And while the flutter jump isn't bad, the lack of a third jump is really uh, bad um, in most circumstances. By the way, it can also be uh, angled slightly uh, and also goes further depending on how long you hold down the button. So it's actually a really cool move. It's just a really bad alternative to actually having a proper recovery. Uh, I would definitely have preferred an actual recovery over this. Um, but other than that, he has a ground pound as well. I'm gonna demonstrate it here instead of over the pit. Uh, and yeah, he also has a long range grab. Um, Alright, so uh, Kirby time. I just realized I had an opportunity to be like, hey, Kirby, coming right back at you. <laughs> and I messed it up. Um, so Kirby has a lot of jumps. He doesn't have infinite jumps. I think it's comparable to how many he has in like 64, which is like 5 or 6 I want to say. But combining this with uh, Final Cutter, and he has a lot of really good uh, recovery options. Final Cutter being his up B like so. He can get a lot of height. Um, other than that, he can inhale enemies in order to gain their powers through his copy ability, uh, like in the standard Kirby games, and he can turn to stone, which grants him invincibility from some attacks. Um, he actually has like the most uh, similar moveset to later incarnations. There's very few moves that stand out as like, oh yeah, they changed that move. Like his dash is different, and his up air is different. But uh, compared to most of the roster, his moveset is very comparable throughout the series. Um, which is kind of interesting, because um, this game was made by uh, Masahiro Sakurai, who is the uh, creative of Kirby. So, uh, Fox. So, uh, Fox is interesting. So he has this blaster like in the rest of the series, but it's kind of slow. <laughs> I don't really like using it uh, because of how slow it is. Um, I also don't think it can be used for like chip damage, like in, um... That's not the word, I don't think. But basically, uh, I don't think it like flinches, so you can kind of just keep spamming it. Um, so yeah, the properties of the blaster are a little bit different, and overall I do prefer how it works in Melee onwards, but uh, Fox was never really one of my favorite characters. He's very fast, and in the right hands he's a really good character, but was never for me. Um, by the way, this particular target sucks, and if I miss this, I was gonna say if I missed it, I was not going to retry it, because that is very finicky. And finally, we've already seen Pikachu, but might as well um, show this again for the sake of completion. Um, I'm not sure if I can beat my record, it's a pretty tight timing window for that. Uh, I did make a couple of mistakes on my best run, so maybe? Okay, not like that. Um, so yeah, overall, um, Pikachu is probably my favorite character in the game. Uh, not the easiest character to play as, but I find um, Pikachu is just really fun. Also, I just like Pikachu, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Alright, so moving on to the uh, hidden characters. We're gonna start with Jigglypuff, actually. I would consider Jigglypuff to be the easiest character to unlock, um, but she actually has the hardest stage. Uh, so her specials aren't great. She has Pound, which kind of pushes her forward a little bit. That's kind of cool, but um, a lot of her targets are really out of the way. In general, I find the hidden characters have really tough uh, bonus stages. Uh, not just this, but also the uh, board the platform. Um, that was too close. Um, so we're gonna ride this platform up and then try to like fall like this. Uh, so we're gonna use Pound to gain a little bit of extra um, distance uh, while trying to go for that. And there we go, not too bad. Next easiest to unlock I would say is probably Luigi, so let's play Luigi next. Luigi is effectively a clone of Mario, as the terminology 
dictates. Uh, the modern term for that is an Echo Fighter, that's the official terminology in Ultimate Onwards. Um, but a lot of people still, I think, use the word clone uh, because that was just kind of what people called this, this character type. So he has a dash attack that's different than Mario's, um, and a lot of his attacks have slightly different properties. I'm pretty sure also his taunt can even do damage, um, which is unusual. Um, but for the most part, he plays very similarly to Mario. In future games, they would find ways to differentiate them, but in this one, they're very much like similar to each other, and Luigi is very much a clone character, or an Echo Fighter. Um, his fireballs don't uh, get affected by gravity, so that goes straight forward, and the tornado feels a little bit less effective. I'm not going to demonstrate it, because I would probably fall off the platform if I tried to show that off. So just playing it safe, and um, yeah, it's going to just finish the stage like that. Alright, so Captain Falcon um, has one of the tougher stages, I think. Even Luigi's requires uh, some fancy footwork there, uh, with that uh, particular super jump there, um, or up B that was just really finicky. So Captain Falcon actually needs to use the Falcon Punch move to hit through these walls. Um, he also has the Falcon Kick, uh, which either goes straight down or kind of at an angle downwards, or forward if he's on the ground. Um, like Link, he also has a jab. A lot of characters have jabs. In some games, you could actually hold it. In this game, you actually do have to mainly tap A, which isn't great. Um, but yeah, other than that, he's pretty standard. He's actually missing his uh, really iconic aerial attack um, that has like a sweet spot to it that does a ton of damage. So he isn't as good, but he's still probably like top tier, I'd say. Um, also, yeah, Falcon Punch cannot be changed uh, in terms of direction, so that works a little bit differently than future games. He also has a grapple move. Not great on a target stage, but oh well. And finally, we have Ness. Ness controls really interestingly. So, he has like this standard attack, he has, you know, aerials and such like everyone else. Um, his smash attacks are pretty solid. Um, nice range on them with the yo-yo and baseball bat. Um, I'm not a big enough of an Earthbound fan to tell you exactly which bat from the series it is, if I'm being honest. Uh, but his specials are what make him so unique. So, PK Thunder is controllable. Obviously, you're vulnerable while doing this attack, but um, you can use it as a projectile or to send Ness flying in order to uh, recover. So, for example, uh, this is not a good place to be demonstrating this, I don't think, but we can actually do this um, and just plummet off the stage. <laughs> Again, not a good place to demonstrate that, but oh well. Give this another shot. Yeah, um, as a result, Ness's recovery uh, takes a decent amount of precision. Uh, I don't like playing as Ness, even though I really like his addition in this game, because he was just kind of like a weird wild card pick almost, where Earthbound only had one game, Earthbound 64 was in dire straits in terms of development, uh, so Ness was just kind of a nice little random addition. Um, unexpected, I would say. Probably the least expected, I'd say. Um, yeah, other than that, um, he has PK Fire, the bane of a lot of Ultimate players' existences, uh, at least on, on online, from what I understand, and he can absorb attacks with his little shield move. But other than that, pretty standard stuff. So with that, that is every Break the Target stage. Uh, but th that's only bonus one. We still have to go through bonus two, and I think I'll be saving that for next time. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Super Smash Bros.